Hi everyone. Well, it's been 40 years since the Apollo 11 mission, and I don't know if you can remember that historic event, but I was one of those kids with their face glued to the TV screen watching that giant leap for mankind. Now, 40 years later, I'm working with some great friends, met some really nice people. We got together, assembled some telescopes, and put them online for people to use. So, with this being the anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing, I'm going to go back to some of our recent lunar observing sessions and see if I can locate the Apollo 11 landing site. And to do that, we're using a NASA lunar landings map, available courtesy of NASA, and you can find it at the following location. Okay, here's the NASA lunar landings map, and we'll zoom in to the Sea of Tranquility. And you'll notice, in the southwest corner, there's a green triangle indicating the Apollo 11 landing site. And on the northern region of the Sea of Tranquility, there's another green triangle indicating the Apollo 17 landing site. Next, we go back to the telescope control applet, where we instructed the telescope to slew and point at the moon, which was done by right-clicking near the moon and choosing Center on Selected Object. You can see the telescope slowing with the at-scope camera in the observatory, and just below is the spotting camera image. And you'll notice even after the auto iris kicked in, the moon is appearing very large because of its brightness. Okay, we're going to turn off the at-scope camera so we can see the pan-zoom map. And we're going to request the pan-zoom map to follow the scope, which will allow us to zoom in on the moon. We'll keep zooming in until the moon occupies most of the area of the pan-zoom map. Well, the moon is a bright object, so we're going to need a neutral density filter. And we're going to set the exposure down to 5 milliseconds and perform a snap. And here we have our first image, taken near the center of the moon. However, we wanted something near the Apollo 11 landing site, and our next slew was to the right side of the moon. Performing another snap. And we get an image that shows the northern half of the Sea of Tranquility. So it looks like we located the Apollo 17 landing site first. We'll just go back to the NASA lunar landings map for another look at the Apollo 17 landing site. Well, what we did was we took a clip of that region, and now we're zooming into our primary camera image, and we're performing an overlay onto the primary camera image. And we're just going to zoom out to get a wider field of view and show the Apollo 17 landing site overlay again. On this particular session, the next telescope slew was a bit to the south. Here you can see the snap being performed. The image came in a bit bright, so there was a levels adjustment. And it shows the full sea of tranquility. You may recall from the lunar landings map that the Apollo landing site was in the southwest corner, right about here. And like before, we're going to perform an overlay with a section of the lunar landing map onto our primary camera image. This time, our field of view is large enough to include the Apollo 11 landing site and the Apollo 17 landing site. Well, that's it. And whether or not you were watching that first small step on TV 40 years ago, if you can look at the moon and identify the Sea of Tranquility, well, you can impress your friends by pointing to the southwest corner and saying, I know where the Apollo 11 lunar landing module sits. I just want to add a quick note on the at-scope camera on our remote telescopes. We were able to see the telescope quite well during this session, mostly because of the moonlight. This moon observing session was performed using remotely located telescopes and the live telescope control applet at mytelescope.com. Thank you for watching, and we hope you enjoyed this presentation.